I'm going to do random pulls for Hong Kong Mahjong. Hong Kong Mahjong is the easiest version to learn. It's a lot like Rummy. You need four blocks and a pair. The blocks can be three in a sequence or three of a kind. Since there's four of every tile, you could also have a four of a kind, but it is counted as a three of a kind. The three in a sequence is called a chow, the three of a kind is called a pung, and the four of a kind is called a kong. Chow, pung, kong. And then when you win, you say mahjong. If you want to know more about scoring, look for a link in the video description below for this player reference. Also, there's a link there to a video playlist of fundamentals. If you're new to Mahjong, or if you already know how to play and just want to build your skills, consider subscribing to my channel. That way you won't miss anything. We're going to do four random pulls, starting with the East Round. We'll roll these dice to determine which seat we're in. One, two, three, four. I rolled a nine, eight, nine. So we're going to be player one. That means we're the dealer. We'll get 14 tiles, because they start the game by discarding. When you play the game, your group will establish whether or not there's a point minimum at the table or fawn minimum. Most groups have a two or three fawn minimum. Some groups say no minimum. You could play chicken hands, which is a zero value. If we're playing at a chicken hand table, no value required, zero points, I think I would probably hold number tiles and try for chows or a mixture because we do have a pung right there. Here's a potential chow, there's a pung, potential pung, and here are two potential chows, three, five, or five, six. This is isolated and these are single honors, winds and dragons. So I think what I would do if I were playing at a chicken hand table, zero points required, I would try for chows or even a mixture of pungs and chows. If I were playing at a table where there is a three fawn minimum, which equates to eight points, I probably would focus on pungs and therefore I would hold the dragon at least. Because if you pair up and pung a dragon, you can get a fawn for that. Right now we have no flowers and that actually is a fawn. So I think what I would do is probably discard these because they will bring no value. The other thing that we could do is try for a half flush. Keep those and discard these. Hold that in case we draw in pairs. Because then we could maybe play half flush with bams and honors or if we pair up, play pungs and leverage those. So maybe discard these. I think if I were playing at that three fawn minimum, that's how I would do it. Push for half flush. Hold those to see if we pair up, discard these. If we're playing at a zero fawn table, I would get rid of those. Focus on number tiles. They're the most flexible because you can chow or pung versus pair up and pung only. So that was East round. Now we're going to do South round. This time we'll be player two. We have flowers, a one, which won't bring us any value. We have a two and we are in south seat. So we have a fawn just because of the flower. We'll get replacements.
regardless of the point minimum, I would play a half flush. There's a 2-3 potential chow, potential pung, or pair. Here's a potential chow, or we could split it up this way and do a potential chow there, potential chow, and there's a chow right there. So you could see the flexibility. If you go left to right, you can make chows, and if you go right to left, you can make a different combination. The more you have, the more flexibility you have. Here, we only have seven tiles. So if we draw in more bands, we'll have a lot more flexibility. But there is flexibility there. Here, we would need to pair up and pung. So the north won't bring us any value, but if we pair up, we could use that to help us get to a half flush. Any combination of winds and dragons with one suit is a half flush, and that's three fawn. I would discard these. Focus on dots. We could chow, pung, or chow, chow, one, two, three-ish blocks. That's a pretty nice start to a half flush. West around. I rolled a five. That means we're going to be player one also known as East, we'll get 14 tiles. We have two flowers, a two and a three. We won't get any value for those. For these tiles, if I were playing at a zero point table, I would play chows. Potential chow. There's a potential chow there or there. This is a closed way where we need the five in the middle, but here is a side weight, so that's more flexible. Then here, we actually have a chow right there. There's a potential chow. This is isolated, but we would have one, two, three, four blocks. All we need is a pair. So I would hold all number tiles, discard these first, play all chow, that's one fawn. Now if we were playing at a table where there's a three fawn minimum, I probably would play half flush. Since we have more cracks than we do these other two suits, I would focus there. We would have one, two, really just two blocks here either a potential pung, potential chow, there's a chow, potential chow, and then these would need work. So we would have a lot of drawing to do with cracks and or honors and dragons. I would discard these first and play half flesh. Right now we would have no score if we, well we would have one fawn if we played all chow in mixed suits and we have no good flowers. And there's only two flowers that are our own. And we're player one. So we would need the one flower. I try not to even think about flowers. I can't consider them bonus. They're actually bonus tiles. And if you count on them as part of your score, you may not be able to win. I try to get all my value out of my hand. And that's why I would go for a half flesh. So that was west round. This is north round. We're going to be in eight, nine, ten. So player two, south seat. For these tiles, first we have no flowers, that's a fawn. You could consider that, but it's risky. Because the minute you draw a flower, if it's not yours, you lose that fawn. So here we have three cracks, three bams, five dots, including a pair. We have two pair here. 
I think what I would probably do, if I were playing at a zero fawn table, I would go for a chicken hand. Discard those. These are all isolated. We could pung here, pung here. We need to pair up. This is this would be even difficult with a chicken hand because these are isolated tiles. If I were playing where there's a three fawn minimum, I would do a half flush with dots. Hold the, these in case we pair up and switch to all pung. So I would discard these first if we were playing at a three fawn table. The strategy is different if you're playing at a chicken hand table and when you're playing at a higher point minimum because you've got to get value in your hand, not with flowers. That would be really risky to count on flowers. If you have a set of tiles at home, get them out and try random pulls. It's a great way to memorize the scoring. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, consider subscribing. Click that little gray bell. That way you'll get notification for when I post new videos and you won't miss an opportunity to learn a new strategy or pick up an insight to the game that could give you an advantage at the table. Between now and the next set of random pulls for Hong Kong Mahjong, may all your picks be keepers.